Orale vatos! This is Ogrodowski of WeAreChange.org, joined, of course, by Tim Peshot, the Liberty Advisor. And Nailed in it. this video, we are going to be talking about the World Health Organization and, of course, more egregious, insane actions by the state. But first of all, right now, blaming the WHO is trending on Twitter as many people are angry at Donald Trump for, of course, cutting funding to the World Health Organization, cutting a 15% of their funds, getting rid of 500 million US dollars that they got from the taxpayer and totally cutting them off, which I say, good. We'll tell you why in just a little bit, but that's not what a large portion of the establishment mainstream media thinks. Even the CDC director is going after Donald Trump. And of course, so is Bill Gates. That is all up in a fury. I don't know if you have the meme photo posted that, that I posted a couple of minutes ago, but he of this course great. Yep. also funds the World Health Organization and he is not happy saying that this move is quote dangerous because the world needs them more than ever to stop this sickness and um uh, I don't know about that. When you look at the World Health Organization's actions, when you see them say that in the beginning there was no human to human transmission of this sickness, when you saw them say there shouldn't be any travel bans, when you see them focusing on talking points about racism and bigotry as they are carrying water for China, China, the same country that is right now going after poor Africans in their country, evicting them, kicking them out, and even banning them from buying McDonald's. Yes, China was literally playing the race game, talking about how the United States was racist. The World Health Organization was puppeteering those lines when Donald Trump, of course, issued a travel ban on China to the United States. And of course, when you look at government action, there's a lot of blame to go around, but specifically the World Health Organization that still continues to lie about masks, telling you masks don't work. Again, uh, proven lie. I could just, I could talk about that for an hour to say the least. There's a, that's a whole nother topic within itself. But, but when you look at the World Health Organization, some people say that they've made it even uh, worse of a situation that we're in right now with their actions and i made a full video about this it is titled the health organization the government tells you to trust that should not be trusted it was released in march 29th of this year and of course i go over all of this how the head of the world health organization is an individual that the chinese government lobbied for to be in there a man that was a revolutionary communist and was accused of hiding a pandemic in his own country as well as other accusations against him from human rights violations and as a revolutionary communist, of course, he is buddy buddy with China. China, of course, is also being accused right now on the. I was going to guess Bill Gates, but okay, China is a close, uh, close second to Bill Gates. Then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're all they're all pretty much tied into each other. A very similar trend. You see a lot of globalists, Rockefeller, Kissinger. Uh, of course, they are the ones partly responsible for quote opening up China to the world, aka making China the manufacturing slave hub that it is, empowering them, working with Mao Zedong promoting and, and rewarding their tyrannical behavior that really is becoming a model for Big Brother. It's making Big Brother blush compared to the, the realities of, of what is happening in China if you compare that to Orwell and 1984. But again, a lot of new information also coming out that China didn't warn the public for six days that could have made the biggest difference. There's other scientific studies talking about if China acted faster, 95% of the sickness wouldn't spread. There's information that I talked about in yesterday's We Are Change video where I specifically highlighted U.S. diplomatic cables from two Two years ago, talking about how the level four lab in Wuhan, that many people think this sickness came from, that the World Health Organization is saying, no, 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 it was just a guy eating a bat. Again, um, and, and it, the whole story, I, the whole story doesn't add up. But when yeah, I mean, look, not to mention they were like importing those bats from like a thousand miles away, the same bats that the like, that the strain came from, and that wet bioweapons lab. I mean, the, yeah, then the whole thing we could go on for a while, and that's that, that, that wasn't tangent. sold at the wet market. This this specific shoehorn 
uh, bat wasn't sold at the wet market, but it was the bats that they were testing and that U.S. diplomatic cables warned there was very little safety procedures uh, at. And they were warning that a major pandemic could come from this lab two years ago because of how uh, unsafe it was and how unserious the situation was taken. There's also other diplomatic cables and intelligence warnings going back till November that Donald Trump was looking at. So again, we could blame a lot of different individuals, a lot of different organizations, uh, but specifically, I think a lot of the burden does rely on China. Now, again, we should avoid any big conflicts with China. There's one brewing, there's a big Tacitus trap, but there's some people Huge. asking, yeah, but there's some people asking just by the actions of China, whether they did this deliberately or not uh, for a greater geopolitical goal. So that that's even being talked about now in The Diplomat in an article here. If we could just pull that up really quickly, that's titled, Did Xi Jinping Deliberately Sicken the World? And again, a lot of information has been contradicted from what the Chinese government has been saying early on. They have gone after doctors. They have gone after lawyers. They have gone after journalists that have been warning the world about this. Uh, and we really have to ask ourselves what is going on here, especially now that China is shutting down a lot of its research to the public, is shutting down a lot of its samples of this sickness, and they're not cooperating with the United States. And it seems like there is seriously a big headbutt about to come with these two world superpowers. And again, what I should urge is caution. What I should urge is diplomacy, because again, if, if, if this kind of already economic conflict unfolds into a bigger conflict, the world is in major trouble. But I believe that should still not hinder an honest conversation about China's role in all of this, which is very significant. And again, uh, with those kind of actions, uh, we also see overbearing government in a response. Again, you, you could blame a lot on governments, you could blame a lot on, on organizations, but um, I'm just trying to segue here into this next article. I don't know if you want to bring it up, Tim, or if you have anything else to say about the specific geopolitical explanation that I just laid out right now. Blame it on the government. I mean, I don't know. That's like my favorite pastime is blaming on the government, especially here on April 15th, which is usually the day uh, that, you know, I mean, th this should be the day that they should stop having people like actually having taxes withhold. I mean, they should just stop, you know, taxing us to begin with, whole other subject. But I mean, what they really should do is make everybody go and have to, you know, write a check on April 15th. And then that way, you know, or maybe make voting on the same day. So then that way, you know, as you're having to then take the funds from out of your wallet and have to go pay the government, then you might then vote a little bit differently. Not that voting really even matters, you know, changing public opinion, doing what we're doing up here, doing what you guys are doing in the comments and, and helping spreading, you know, awareness of all this stuff is actually more important because all the politicians do is put their fingers up in the, up in the air, see what, which way the wind's blowing and then acquiesce to that. That. But yeah, I mean, if you, uh, I do have this article ready to go on screen right now about the uh, you know Baptist church members getting fired. I was going to, I was going to say, in relation to total totalitarian Orwellian governments, we have some latest news coming here in the United States. Tim, what is it? We've got Baptist church members given five hundred dollar tickets for listening to church service in their cars via radio in a parking lot. So yeah. here in you Mississippi. Are. Yeah, here you are in the new in the new America over here where you can't even stay in your car and listen to a church service. Uh, I mean, just absolutely ridiculous. And so that's why I've always maybe we can even have this like maybe even on your store at some point, but to have a make America free again. Sure. So I already own one. I own a make America free again. And for me, it was always about freedom, not about great. I mean, what is great? I mean, what's made us great is the fact that the government is, you know, we supposedly are supposed to be free. I mean, I'm not naive. I mean, I would know that, you know, it's not been a free country since Luke and I have been alive, but you know, we're going to wish it was as, as we were enslaved as we were two months ago, three months ago at the rate, all this stuff is going. And so I'm going to love, you know, when all these, you know, America, you know, good old boys and I'm a, you know, I back the blue, uh, you know, let's, let's see, you know, how they back the blue when, you know, this 4th of July, when they're not allowed, you know, they're going to be like, you know, like, like, you know, pretty well, they're going to go out their windows and, you know, look at the fireworks throughout their windows because they can't go outside and talk about how free they are and how America they are. And maybe get their imported Budweiser, which is not even American beer because InBev ended up buying them, which I think was a uh, Brazilian company that got bought by a Belgian company, maybe the other way around. Anyways, that doesn't matter. Just illustrating the point that, you know, freedom pretty much right now is nothing more than an illusion. And, uh, and, and just, but and if we don't stand up now, the amount of tyranny you get is the amount of tyranny you put up with. And so if we don't stand up to this stuff now, 
you know, we just know where this is eventually going. Uh, and we talked about this the other day. If only there was a First Amendment that that was uh, that told. I mean, the First Amendment says the state cannot tell the church what to do. And so this is a direct violation. And anyone enforcing this should be penalized as such uh, for violating the very First Amendment, the very first one. So, I mean, they, the framers put that there for a reason. They put number two there as a reason, too. So sorry about that, Luke. No, 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 it's fine. I just tweeted, uh, if you trust the government, you failed history class. Now, again, also, what's happening in Mississippi is an action taken by the local state there. This is not a federal action. This is local law enforcement working with local government, not the federal government, implementing these draconian laws that are absolutely outrageous. And I say this as a person who still advocates for you to respect people's space, especially if they're uh, older, especially if they're immune compromised. I still think it's a good idea to wear a mask, just like they do in Hong Kong when they've been able to beat out the influenza out there. Uh, I still advocate for this, but this is not the way to deal with this. This is not the way to approach this. These people were sitting in their own cars, listening to a radio station, respecting each other's space, going out of their way to make sure that they're not going to be spreading this sickness around and, and then the state comes in there and gives them a five hundred dollar ticket what is what are you doing well, what, so like, and, and this is the thing this is this is the state is making sure that this sickness is going to spread because they're having officers go from car to car to car and they're like okay open the car window talk to me all those people have been exposed to everyone because of that police officer going from car to car to car, handing them a ticket after interacting, probably also taking their identification. Most likely the police officers, as we've been seeing from videos and photos from all over the world, don't wear the masks, don't have the gloves, uh, don't you know, follow basic proper uh, you know, PPE procedures. Don't do any of that. that. That's totally out the door. You're not socially distancing the way we want you to do it. We're going to force you not to social distance. Well, speaking of right force. there in your face, stealing your rights, which is absolutely ridiculous. Well, speaking of force, this is a brand new article that we didn't, uh, it's not in the lineup over here, but I think, uh, you know, you'll like this being not, I don't think you'll like this, but New York Governor Andrew Cuomo orders all people to wear face coverings in public. I'm looking at this right now for the first time. Uh, I said the crisis won't be over until a vaccine is available. Uh, now, go is figure. this a recommendation or is this punishable by law? Because again, a, a lot of the things that should be done here is a lot of public education and a lot of encouragement. But uh, the, when the law steps in, that's really where you got to question stuff because when the law steps in, it's not to protect you. It's to siphon off money off of you. It's to penalize you. It's to put you in their control grid system into the prison industrial complex that, again, is far exceeding 2.2 million people right now. Again, it's just modern day slavery, what's happening. We don't need more laws. We need more of a tempered understanding and educated proportional um, response based on individual action and responsibility. So no, I'm not happy that there's more laws. More laws are not going to fix anything. There's laws on the books that are absolutely stupid, um, shouldn't be followed. So it's, it, so it, did you get to the part, is it mandatory? Is it is it suggested? Because again, we've seen a lot of different moves by Andrew Como. Some of them actually uh, pretty reasonable. Some of them ridiculous. He usually was always ridiculous. Uh, but but with this particular instance, what is it, Tim? Okay, yeah, I mean, I'm scanning here real quickly, but it's saying part of that phase reopening is requiring people to wear a face mask. He said local governments would enforce the order, but fines won't be issued at this time. So, I mean, how are you going to enforce an order? So uh, the only it way seems an like order, a recommendation. Yeah, the only way an order is ever enforced is you know with a man with a you know shiny gun point at your face, and maybe you know hopefully they don't have you know YouTube take us off for there, so we will have a metaphorical money gun and he points it to your face instead. Uh, but yes, yeah, you're you are right to go out for a walk in the park. Go out, out for a walk because you need to which get is out of the far house. more than than uh, again when you look at other states, they're even outlawing that, which is insane. Yeah, I said the dog is getting on your nerves. Fine. Don't infect me. You, you don't have a right to infect me, he said. So, yeah, I mean, this, I mean, everything always starts off as a slippery slope. So maybe it starts off now as there isn't any fine. But I mean, come on, we're talking about New York. I mean, if New York is always, you know, always trying to find ways to extract people out of money, extort people out of money, find people. I mean, the throughway system that was built before we were even born, that was only supposed to be like a temporary little, little fee until it got paid off. And then that fee never went away and it keeps getting increased and increased. And then, you know, 40 
years later, boom, you know, the fee's still there and the roads still suck. And, but you know, who would build the roads and maybe we can title this, you know, who's got the power over here. So, uh, you know, or, or, you know, who, who lost, who lost the power because, uh, I mean, why were we ever funding, you know, the World Health Organization to begin with? I mean, if Bill Gates loves this so much, maybe he should have solely funded it. I mean, I know he is funding it along with like NIH and CDC and all this other. And that's why you even see here. I mean, I, I, I was just scanning this article for the first time. And I see here that, uh, you know, what does it say right at the top? Oh, we got to wait till a vaccine is available. I mean, how freaking convenient that you know I haven't even you know didn't even look at this art, this article ahead of time. And uh, of course, you know the first thing they they trot out there on CNBC and Cuomo and everybody else in the government is, oh, we need a vaccine. No more mass gatherings. Uh, and so this is all just a, you know frog boiling. Let's see you know how much we can ratchet up the heat in them to get you know keep all those uh, little you know uh, good little slaves in line. Yeah, I mean, again, as I just said just a few moments ago, if, if you trust the government, you failed history class. That's an important lesson that we all need to learn and understand. Look at history. I mean, uh, I've been recently just delving into it, doing a lot of studying with it, studying, of course, the Great Depression, studying, of course, the pandemics that happened in 1920, 1820. Again, it, it's almost like as, as if there's a hundred year cycle to these things and so on further out throughout history. But I mean, uh, this is an unprecedented situation. We're dealing with something that could be, uh, you know, very severe. That could be nothing, could be less than the flu. We still don't know because of the, uh, just the uh, variabilities here are so high. We don't know a lot of information. We're still getting it in. Um, so as we do that, we're going to share as much information with you as we can with, on this independent media broadcast that is uh, surviving because of you sharing this video. If this video was insightful, helpful for you, if you know anyone defending the World Health Organization right now, there's a lot of people on social media doing that right now. Send them this video. Uh, let, let them know about the truth about the World Health Organization so they could really see some of their atrocious actions that have essentially made this situation that much worse. It didn't need to be that bad. It didn't need to uh, go to where we're at right now. Other countries dealt with it a lot better. Other countries like South Korea, uh, you know, where, you know, wearing masks is uh, culturally acceptable. They've been doing it before, you know, countries like that didn't have to shut down and lock down their entire, uh, entire economies because they had a better grip and handle of this. Other countries haven't, it, haven't taken it seriously. The World Health Organization is still telling you not to wear masks. I, again, um, if, having the government step in is not the right answer. The right answer is radical uh, self-reliance and independence and education. And that's what I'm here to promote. If you like that, Share it with your friends and family members. Stay tuned for more here on Change the News.